looking at Sagebrush and listening to some relaxing music. Sagebrush is a game from a developer I haven't heard of before, Redact Games. It's part of the uh, Itch.io bundle for racial justice and equality, a bundle of 1,600 games at this point. It's a l many games. It's so many games that you don't even know where to begin. But uh, I did see some people recommend Sagebrush, and I thought it seems like it could be all right for a stream. So it seems like it's just about the right length, and it seems like it could be interesting. The plot line of Sagebrush, according to the Itch.io page, is it is a first-person narrative adventure about exploring the compound of an apocalyptic millennialist, millennialist cult in remote New Mexico years after they collectively took their lives in a mass suicide event. So I have a feeling this is not going to be a laugh-a-minute game. Let's start a new game. I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all, that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. So this game has a pretty let's say, lo-fi looking sound to it. And we do like that. This kind of look of it kind of reminds me of something that might have been in that uh, PS1 horror demo pack that we played a while back. It's a nice look. first person. It's walking around. It's trying to discover answers through what I'm, I'm guessing is going to be like messages and such. What happened here and why? It seems to be the idea. We can interact with highlighted objects by pressing E. We're not going to lie. We're surprised it actually made it all the way here. We brought some gear in the trunk. Probably should not have come here in a car that we expected to break down, but I don't know. Open the trunk. Here we go. Pick up these wire cutters. Got an inventory. A pair of wire cutters we borrowed from the house. Alright. Examine this gate. Gate won't budge and you didn't bring anything to bust through. Or did we? Can we use the wire cutters? Well, I'm pressing E or... It's selected. Hmm. So maybe this is not what the wire cutters are needed for. Was there any other equipment? Could we drive the car through the gate? I don't think there was any other gear. Doesn't seem like there's any other gear in this trunk. It does also does not seem I can get in the car. I mean... Oh. Okay, here we go. Examine this fence. All right. Well, this is the bad part of the fence. Let us use. The wire cutters clip through the rusting fence easily and create a small hole. Yeah, I guess that's one way of doing it. Though driving the car through the front gate would have been a better way of doing it. All right. We're in. We're in. I guess we don't have too much going on in our life. This is if this is our idea of an excursion. Let's go to 
the cult compound where they all killed each other and find out why. Read the pamphlet. It's too dark to read anything. Pick up the map. There we go. It could be a little confusing getting around our little home. Don't worry. Sister Anne has printed some maps to help you get acclimated. All right. The cleansing room, I see. Moldy dishes litter the table, stained and dusty. There's no food, though. Wild animals likely finish the scraps. Considering that uh, they killed each other in the 90s, I would hope there's no food left. Oh, a tape deck. Well, uh, I had just graduated from college. You know I was a communications major. That part was true. So I graduated, and I couldn't find a job. I had no idea what I wanted to do and got pretty depressed. I hear that. At the time said I was holding him back and took off, so that was that. I could have moved home, but I didn't. I stayed out in California, but it's not like I had any friends there. My parents would call and I would just lie about how things were going. I didn't know what I wanted because, I guess, I didn't really want anything. I would wake up and just count the seconds ticking off of my life until I fell back asleep. We were all broken in some way, I think. Some more than others. Yeah, you just don't want to get up, but you have to because you need to make some money so you can keep, keep lying in your bed. That's really the only reason to get up. Maybe there's a power source nearby. Performance schedule. Let's see, on Monday, Josiah uh, spends, plays original hymns. Tuesday, gospel reading. Wednesday, Juliet violin recital. Thursday, gospel reading. Friday, children's reenactment of Book of Sariel. No, the power has been pretty finicky lately. You might have to restart the generator to get the lights back on. The key is in the box, and the generator is around the side. So says Andrew. Let's look at this. Let's get this key. Doink. Let's go around the side and see if we can find that generator. This is probably a generator. Turn it on. There we go. It's a diesel generator. There's a keyhole next to the ignition button. You wonder if there's any gas remaining after all this time. Well, I mean, the gas shouldn't leave if it's not being used. Generator hums to life. Great. Get some lights on in here. Can I look at this now? Read pamphlet. Too dark. Still too dark to read anything. Light switch here? Not here, anyway. But over here... I did not turn lights on in the hallway, though. Too dark to read his bulletin board. Too dark to read anything. Any light switch in here? Doesn't seem like it. Examine this ping pong table. It's a ping pong table. It's the only game you see around. Doesn't seem like there's enough room to play. I was about to say, how would you really play a game of ping pong here? You got to, like, really squeeze in there. Just really squeeze... Oh, here is... It's right here. There we go. There we go. No one wants to hear that. You take a book off of the shelf. We know the conspiracy can trace itself back as far as the 4th century, when Althanasius and his cronies first began to exclude essential works from the Bible. You flip through the pamphlet on the shelf. There is an ancient law that modern society has fought to bury. The role of man is to protect and nourish the flesh. The role of the woman is to protect and nourish the soul. And up here. You take a Bible from the shelf and skim. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh but made alive in the spirit. Mm -hmm. We remember that lesson. You have to weaken the flesh to become strong in the spirit. 
We remember that lesson so well. It's too dark. Is there a light switch in this hallway? Because it's too dark in the hallway. Is that it? Okay, that is a light switch there. Let's look at this man. The painting shows an intensely focused middle-aged man. He holds a book in his left hand. The painting seems less than professional, but the man's determination shows through. The man's willpower is greater than the poor skills of the artist, is what it is trying to say. Have you sinned? Are you plagued by doubt? Do you fear death? Do you have the nagging feeling that your church doesn't have the answers? There's a reason. Father James can help. What does Father James have to say? Get to know the newest members of the flock. Welcome them with open arms and open hearts. My name is Christopher. I'm from Flagstaff. I was a farmer before and hoped to lend my expertise to help feed the flock. Fun fact, I hold the record for most blue ribbons at the Arizona State Fair Livestock Competition. That is fun. I'm Viola. My two wonderful children, my son Lucas and daughter, daughter Juliet, are from Fresno. I'll be helping out schooling our children in the ways of the Lord. Fun fact, I was born in Vancouver, so I'm technically also Canadian. That's less fun. Hello, I'm Peyton. I'm from a small town in Oklahoma you've probably never heard of. I run a grocery store in town, but ever since it's shut down, I've been looking for something more. Father James is helping me to find that. Fun fact, I served in the Navy for a term. Yeah, I guess that's a little fun. Hello, friends. I'm Candace. I love cooking and crafts, so hope I can energize the flock so that we, me fulfill his word. Fun fact, I can speak three ling languages. Actually, that is, that is quite fun. I agree that this is a fun fact. I'm Hosiah, and I'm so thank you, thankful to you and the Lord for giving me a home after years living on the streets. I finally feel like I have a family. Fun fact, blank. Yeah, that's how I would, I would probably leave it blank, too. Hello, I'm Lillian. I was a student at USC before I dropped out because I couldn't stand the indoctrination anymore. I was looking for truth and didn't find it there. Now I know I've been looking in the wrong place. Fun fact, I've been to four continents in the last three years. That is more, con more continents than years. That is fun. My name is Vance. I, throw, I saw through the lies of my parents' church. They were filling our heads with blasphemy. Now I see the truth of it because of Father James. Fun fact, I'm a really fast reader. That's a little fun, I guess. Just a little bit. Not, not too fun. An angel walks through an empty field, his hands pressed together in prayer. The painting depicts an angel tenderly cradling the corpse of Jesus Christ in his tomb. Tender cradles. I wonder what this Father James has to say. I want to learn of his knowledge. And if a woman have an issue and her issue in her flesh be blood, she shall be put apart seven days. And whoever toucheth her shall be unclean until the even. And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. And whoever toucheth her bed shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. And whoever toucheth anything that she sat upon shall wash his clothes, and bathe himself in water, and be unclean until the even. Leviticus 15.19.22 I'm glad that this is here to, to look at and remember every time we need to go to the bathroom, which is inherently an unclean place. You look tired, I know. I don't like to look in the mirror. Okay. Do we have uh, some some other wisdom here? Jesus saith to him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit, and ye are clean, but not all. John 13, 10. Much more concise wisdom this time around. You look tired. Well, what we want is to really get to the meat of things. What happened here in the 90s? Here's a guitar. A nice instrument once. Now the strings are rusted and the lacquer faded. Can I get around here? When we all get to heaven... C and G. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. 
Oh, we have to do the whole thing, clearly. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing and shout the victory. While we walk the pilgrim pathway, clouds will overspread the sky. But when traveling days are over, not a shadow, not a sigh. Let us then be true and faithful, trusting, serving every day. Just one glimpse of him in glory, will the toys of life repay? Onward to the prize before us, soon his beauty will behold. Soon the pearly gates will open, we shall tread the streets of gold. Still got it. You know, it's been a while since I've, I've had to do any church singing. Let's read the note to Leonard. Leonard, the pantry is not your personal snack drawer. Food is for the flock to share. If you keep st keep stealing cookies from the storeroom, you'll have to answer for your crimes in the cleansing room. Please pray and reflect on your actions and how they harm the flock. I'm praying for you too, Andrew. What Andrew doesn't know is that Leonard has been praying and Jesus has been saying, hey, Leonard, you should totally have more cookies. Those cookies are awesome. Just keep... It's fine. You're, it's Jesus approved. Keep eating the cookies. Well, Jesus tells me I can have some cookies. I think that trumps what Andrew has to say, honestly. Leonard hasn't heeded warnings about taking more than his share of food. He keeps swiping snacks from the storage room. Until we can straighten him out, I've decided to move his favorite foods into the farm shed and hide the key on, on the side of the bookshelf next to the ping pong table. Oh. The bookshelf next to the ping pong table. Okay. I mean, I don't think that all that... I don't think that food is going to be very good anymore. But let's see if we can find it. Uh, it's not what we want. Can we see, like, a key? Oh, there we go. Gate key, farm shed key. Bloop. bloop. Let's see, anything else in here? Many cans. This fell over. The cans fell. Stacks of cardboard boxes storing everything from jars of yeast and jars of jam to paper plates and replacement light bulbs. Mm, the cereal boxes. Tons of cereal boxes. None of the sugary stuff, though. Unfortunately, due to the low res, we can't really see what the brands are. I mean, I can, I can guess what they're based on. That's Wheaties. That's Grape Nuts. But if the resolution was higher, we would have to, we would be able to see what they changed the names to. I cannot see, make them out though. Utensils, decorations, grains, etc. Hmm. Light switch not working in this room. Guess not. Too dark to read that. Interior is coated in the long, dried, blackened remains of various melted, frozen foods. Eh. Small can? Small tin of green beans dented on the side. And large can. Huge can of pork and beans, just like you eat, used to eat growing up. It's a large can. Buying that in mass for m many people who will be eating pork and beans. You fiddle with the knobs. There's no hiss of gas, no clicking ignition. This range is long dead. You open the door and immediately slam it shut after the overwhelming stench of rotting meat hits your nostrils. Well, what did we expect, really? Too dark? Cannot read? Light switch? That one worked. Monday, spinach casserole. Tuesday, barbecue. Wednesday, fasting. Thursday, pork, pork chops. Friday, a beef stew. Saturday, chicken. Sunday, fasting. Oh, fasting is the best meal. Due to power outage, food, food stores are spoiled. We will have to replace the planned meals with canned foodstuffs and produce until new supplies are acquired. 
And what about this? Yeah. It's like I'm just far away enough that it's hard for it to... There we go. Enable us to use thy manifold blessings with moderation. Grant our hearts wisdom to avoid excess in eating and drinking and in the cares of this life. Teach us to put our trust in thee and to await thy helping hand. Amen. Can I look at these cabinets up here? No. Alright, we're back in here. I don't know if there's anything else. And we have a couple of keys. So that's good. Let's run around to some other buildings and see what we can find. Let's run around and try to get past these fences and see what we can find. Now I think this fence goes all the way to the fence. Unfortunately, we are not able to just jump the fence, which would be convenient. Oh, there we go. Open this gate. Um, well, let's see. There. Yes? There we go. I think we could have just jumped over that, honestly. I don't think we needed a key. Brother Earl was in here. No longer. No longer. Is that something down there? No, it's just a hitch. Here's Brother Aaron. Doors rusted shut. Break the window? No. Uh, here are the showers. And the outdoor toilet. Alana, door shut. This one's knocked over. Sister Hope, probably, probably shut. Yeah, it's shut. It's Brother Elroy, that is also shut. I mean, even if they weren't shut, these are very small. It's not like we. It's unlikely there would be much to find. He's Brother Leonard. Okay. Uh, well, we have farm shed and generator. We do not have the key to Leonard's door. We need to find the key to Leonard's door. I wonder if it's the case that all the others are rusted. It might be that everything else is rusted. Only Leonard has an openable door, but we need to find that key. Sister Mary and John lived here. Two people living in the same one? I hope they were married. Otherwise, it would be sinful. Sister Viola Juliet Lucas. Uh, we can... Okay, so this one's openable as well, if we find this key. All right, here we are at the bathrooms. Well, we can probably make an assumption that we need to find any keys to get into any of those. We know we can get into two of them. The other, it might, it might be that all the others are rusted. We will see. How about this? This generator is on. And sit on in here. This looks like a school. Examine the jackets. Lucas, John, and Juliet's jackets. You wrestle through the pockets and find nothing. Eh, these kids didn't have anything good on them. Hmm. They left their jackets hanging in the school. 
kind of makes it sound like something sudden happened. Also, also a lot of desks for only three students. Ooh, a tape recorder. Well, first, let's look at this note. Juliet, honey, why are you so stubborn? Why do you reject the flock's love? You don't pay attention in class. You don't try hard on your assignments. You lie about doing your readings. I'm worried about you. I've asked Father James to take some time to speak to you one-on-one. One on one. Please listen to him. He knows so much. He can help soothe your doubts, I promise. Just please give it a try. Love, Mom. Juliet's been having trouble in class. Can we get any, uh... Okay, let's look at the assignments. Here's Lucas's. A big role model for me is Father James. He is a prophet of Jesus and a great person. He is going to save all our souls and let us go to heaven. Father James is funny and smart, too. He makes jokes during his talks that make everyone laugh. He shows that you can be a very good person, even if you are a little bit weird-looking. It's one, what's on the inside that matters. For teaching me that and for saving my soul, Father James is my role model. I love Father James and Jesus. Wonderful work, Lucas. Father will be so proud. Here's Ellie's. Anne is my biggest role model. She is a perfect wife and mother to us all, just like Mary. She does everything she's told to help Father James. She thinks about everyone else before she thinks about herself. I hope to be just like her if I grow, if I grow up before the days of reckoning. Great work, Ellie. Anne would be so proud to hear this. You will have many chances to be just like her in paradise, so don't worry. Um, let's, let's save Juliet's for last. How about John's? Leonard and Peyton are my role models. They know how to fight and how to protect the flock from Satan and secular bad guys. Good work, John. I hope it never comes to violence, though. Maybe they should be teaching these kids a little bit of spelling, you know? Okay. My role model is Jesus, because he is perfect and he loves everyone. I want to be more like Jesus. See me after class, Juliet. How dare you want to be like Jesus? I mean, not. it was concise, but concise is not necessarily bad. I was expecting something worse. Here's a tape recorder. I often helped Viola in the schoolhouse. I enjoyed working with the children. We taught them reading, writing, scripture. Viola was one of the most faithful among us. If Anne was like the mother of the flock, Viola was the older sister. I remember one lecture she gave the children on the nature of hell that was so vivid, so unflinching, it had the kids in tears. I told her she was scaring them, and she said, good, they should be scared. Now, we, now, we're going to play a little game. We're going to put a blindfold on the kids and, and poke at them with forks and, you know, maybe, like, you know, light a match and maybe, like, hold it up to them for a little bit. And it's like, this could be hell. I mean, if it's, it's a taste of it. I mean, you better be good. Or else you're going to get more of this. You can make out faded writing from the last lesson. The first revelation, the day Father James received the truth. You flip through the wall calendar and see the following upcom upcoming dates marked. April 7th, celebration of the crucifixion. June 3rd, feast of the first revelation. July 18th, celebration, celebration of the birth of our prophet. Which would be James, I guess. You take a book off the shelf, the illustrated book of Bible stories. Some of the pages are torn out. Well, I can't let the kids see the more racy illustrations. Anything else? Uh, multiple copies of the book of Sariel. Flipping through, you see major inconsistencies in the different versions. You need to get the story straight here. What's the canonical version of the book of Sariel? Here's a young earth creationist textbook called The True History of the Earth. Finally. Be able to teach our kids how things actually came about without resorting to these secular lies. Also, I did not... I guess the actual final letter of the alphabet is a cross. I didn't know that.
Well, it seems like these kids were being brought up right. I'm not sure what could have happened here. Farm shed general. I don't see how that's useful. No, there's a large house. I might assume Father James might have been living in that house. It seems about right. Um, can't really tell where we're standing right now, but there's the school. So, yeah, we're standing in front of the rectory, which would mean that's, that's Father James's house. He seems like he was living okay. I don't see him living in a trailer with an open bathroom. Let's see. So right now, it looks like I would be heading towards the chapel. Can I just walk up this? No, I can't. All right, so we'll go to the fire pit first. Here's the fire pit. Anything here to look at? Well, it doesn't seem like it. Oh, here we go. Patch of dirt. Soft mound of dirt stands out, stands out near the base of the tree. Well, I don't think these keys is go are going to help. I need to find a shovel or something. Home plate? Oh, they're playing some baseball, I guess. A worn down home plate covered in dirt and grass. The other bases around here? Yeah. First base in the ranch is small baseball diamond. Second base. Third base is barely visible beneath the overgrowth. I guess the pitcher's mound would be here. Pitcher's mound is slightly elevated on a pile of dirt. It's rather bumpy for uh, a baseball diamond, but I mean, I guess you take what you get. Uh, here's a path leading up to the chapel. It's a little winding. They didn't really have to build the chapel on this hill. That just makes it inconvenient. No. Anything at the base of it? Probably should check. There's a... Looks like a a, ba a cellar, but it's not letting me interact with that. All right. Is that a puzzle? Chapel door lock. Well, I have farm shed and generator, so I'm not... This has an elaborate lock, it would appear. So we can't go in there yet. All right, so I guess right now what I'm looking at is, are the mines. The, mo the mines? No, there's mines and also cleansing room. Why don't we go to the cleansing room and see what that's about? Some bugs at the door of this of this cleansing room. It looks like. Examine the blood stain. Blood has seeped out from under the door and soaked into the dirt. Flies still swarm the area. And this has been here for quite some time. Uh, farm shed. No. Generator. No. All right. I need a key to open up the cleansing room. I'm sure it's fine in there. Uh, this is. The back door is also locked. I need to start finding some keys because I'm getting a lot of doors that are locked up. All right, check out the mines. Are the mines locked? Mines are locked. Hmm. All right, so. Let's go south, which is farm. Okay, one of the keys I have is farm shed. So to the south is the farm. 
Let us go to farm. Some, I guess, what I would assume dried up and dead crops. Because no one would have been maintaining this farm for this time. Alright, what do we have here? Got some, I'm assuming hay. Uh, some crates of things. A tractor. I cannot ride the tractor, it seems. Ah, here's a shed. Open this up. Here we go. I don't suppose there's power in the shed. I would think probably not. It's a jacket. A ragged old work jacket. You ruffle through the pockets, coughing at the dust. We find a key. What is the key? Andrew's trailer. Okay, we'll go check that out. Uh, batteries. You load the batteries into your flashlight. Let's hope they're still charged. Hey, great. We just, we had a flashlight. We just didn't have batteries. Can anyone truly know the joy of the absolute truth? The freedom that comes with releasing all of one's doubt like so much ballast into the sea. I know that feeling now. For so long I searched. I searched among the Catholics, idol worshippers, and perverts. I searched among the Baptists, hypocrites. I searched among the Pentecostals, infested by charlatans. I tried so many churches, and all of them, all of them to a one, were filled with fools and liars. Now I know why Father has helped me to see. Must be one convincing guy. Let's uh, play this tape. The first time I met Father James, I was immediately filled with a sense of peace. It's hard to explain. I guess he just seemed so sure. He asked if I was a believer. I said I'd been raised Catholic, but it never clicked. There's a reason for that, he said. They've been lying to you, all of them. And I knew he was right. Of course, they were lying the whole time. Why did I never think of that? It's all so simple. Let's look at this cabinet. Full of garden and farm implements, still caked in old gray dirt. And is that cereal? Yeah, it's Leonard's favorite cereal. They locked it in here so he couldn't get to it. Gas can empty, watering can also empty, bags of seed, and weed killer. Right. So, we are heading to the residential area to get to find Andrew's trailer, since we got his key. So Andrew was really passionate about whatever it was they were doing here. He felt that he just cast off all the falsehoods that had been that had been told to him all his life, and now he found his purpose. Due to James. So as I approach this, looks like Andrew is like around near the center. Ah, here he is. All right, what's he got in here? He's got a tape recorder. He's got a journal. We men must all be fools to buy the malarkey spat at us by mainstream churches. The Catholic Church says we're awaiting Christ's return when they full well know better. And the rest of Christendom believes them, the Mary worshippers. Perhaps we'll never know why the Lord wait, waited until Father James to correct the record. 
Perhaps our Father in Heaven waited for the earthly man he knew could bear this burden with grace. Blessed be the Lord who saw fit to include wretches like me in his plan. I await the third coming with open arms and a heart full of love. I assume the second coming was when James was born. I I would assume. Let's see. Here's a letter. Brian, I love you. You're my brother, but you do not know what you... This is probably Andrew's voice, probably. Brian, I love you. You're my brother, but you do, no, you do not know what you're talking about. This is my family now. They love me, and I love them in a way that transcends even blood. Maybe that hurts you to hear. I'm sorry, but there is no hiding from the truth. I know you have your doubts about your church. You've told them to me. Let me tell you, I have no doubts here. None. Of course, if you stop denying what you know in your heart, we would welcome you with open arms. You need to come with to us and live in one of these dinky trailers and eat your proportioned food. Anyway, pick up key to Viola's trailer. Oh, why does Andrew have a key to Viola's trailer? Scandalous. Andrew, I greatly enjoyed our talk earlier. I'd like to continue it. The children will be helping sow the fields tomorrow afternoon, so I'll be alone if you would like to stop by Viola. Man, even Andrew was living in sin. Can't believe this. Satan infiltrating, even here, among the pious. Use the tape deck. Life with the flock was good. We would meet for morning prayer with Father James in the chapel, then meet for breakfast, and then we'd set off to work for the day. Some of us worked the fields, others worked on expanding the compound. We had a school teacher, we had cooks. In the evening we would study scripture or listen to one of Father's lectures. Then it would be time for penance, more prayer, and then sleep. I slept better those early nights than I had in years. I was home. Do you know how good it feels to find home after so long? I would have done anything for Father. He saved me. I don't know. You started saying life was good here, and then everything after that didn't really sound any good. So we have Viola's key. Viola's trailer is to the west of Andrew's. Um, so let's see. Let's get a landmark. There's the chapel up there. So right now I'm sort of looking to the northeast. So Viola's trailer should be around this way. There's Alana. This one's knocked over. It's Sister Hope. Yeah, here's Viola. Okay. Hmm. Viola it, Viola is has a child. I believe. It's I believe Lucas is. I'm not sure. Alright, got some letters. There's the lesson plan. Tuesday AM discussion of Matthew chapter 26. Tuesday PM discussion of the lies of the false churches. Wednesday AM discussion of Friar James, Father James's visions and prophecies. Wednesday PM field work. A reading from the book of Sariel, James 1 to 1 3. This is the word of the angel Sariel given unto the man James in the time before the days of taking. Sariel came unto James as he returned from unrighteous war. The angel appeared unto the man James under seven stars in the eastern sky. The angel spoke, Be not afraid, man, for you are a chosen as a messenger. These words are the Lord's words, become my words, become your words. Amen. And uh, the note to Viola. I will see you tonight for alternative cleansing in the rectory. 
come early, we have much to talk about. Know the day I receive my first vision, and you will know the code. Hmm. First vision, maybe this is from, uh, from the father. What is the day that he received the first vision? Well, let's see. I don't think it doesn't really say the day, does it? Let's see. Note from Viola. Lillian, forgive me if I'm speaking too freely, but I care deeply about you, and I worry that you're having doubts about the Father and his teachings. You're young, Lily. I understand where you're coming from, believe me. But as someone with a lot more life experience, let me tell you that you have nothing to doubt. Father James is a prophet of the Lord. He speaks the true word. If you need proof, just look at his prophecies that have come true. But more than that, if you pray and listen quietly, you will feel in your very soul the truth of his teachings. I am here for you if you need to talk. Yours in Christ's love, Viola. There's no reason to doubt the Father. He clearly knows best. Here's Viola's diary. I had forgotten what love felt like. I thought that all the years suffering under Eric's thumb had ruined me. I thought there was no hope for happiness ever again, but I was so, so wrong. I feel so safe here. Father James has restored my faith in Christ, but also in men and in myself. A wonderful blessing. Yes, there is pain, but it is necessary, and I enter into it willingly and joyfully. I am so blessed to be part of this flock and to help ensure that my dear children taste the fruit of eternal life. Lucas has taken life here easily, but Juliet, well... We'll need to be patient with Julia. She just needs time. She'll come around and see. Father James says that Eric will burn in hell for his sins against me. I know I shouldn't take joy in that, but the thought of it makes me smile. Father says that even Eric could join the flock if he wanted it badly enough. But I know my husband well enough to know that he would laugh in the face of the truth. He is rotten with sin, and he will get what he deserves. Oh, Lord Jesus, please give me guidance. I was only doing what he asked of me, Lord. I was doing it for him and for you. But I'm two weeks late now and throwing up every morning. Lord, oh, Lord, I don't know who the Father is. It could be James or it could be... Do I tell him? Will he be happy with me or furious? Have I sinned? What cleansing will I need to endure my soul of this black mark? I've got, I've got the pregnancy problems. Pregnancy problems are happening. Let's listen to a tape recorder. We were chosen, all of us, by the Lord. Do you know how good that feels? To be chosen? I hope you do. It's a feeling we all need in our lives. And on top of that, Father James took a special interest in me. He said he felt spiritually invigorated by my presence and often called me to the rectory to spend time with him. Not dumb, I knew, but I didn't care. I was so honored to be his chosen. Mm, yes, spiritually invigorated. Let's see. Did we... Yeah, we didn't find anything else in here, did we? Like, we didn't find a new key or anything. We found these notes... Can't access those. We found this diary. It's like a teddy bear. A little toy car. This note, light switch, tape recorder, sink. Uh, so we didn't find any items. And it doesn't seem like I can interact with anything else. Hmm. So if that's the case, then we're kind of at a dead end in that we have not gotten any new items. Let's see. So we've examined the residential area. We've examined the community hall. We examined the farm. The fire pit. Well, we need to find a shovel to dig something up at the fire pit. The rectory is locked. The chapel is locked. The mines are locked. The cleansing room is locked. There is a thing, so there was something that was mentioned here in this note. Know the day I received my first vision and you will know the code. So, there, 
saying that there's a code to open to unlock the rectory. We didn't have um, any option of like entering a code or anything. It just said it was locked. Like if I go there now. I don't think there was an option to enter a code or anything. So far we have seen two generators. I've turned those on with my key. Right, this goes to a locked gate. There's a padlock on it. Yeah. So... We cannot unlock that gate with our key. We need to find a different key that will be able to open that one up. So, so far, everything else is locked. And getting into Viola's trailer did not result. It resulted in a clue, a clue about a, a code. But we don't know what that is or where we would enter it yet. Maybe if we get inside the rectory, um, maybe it would become more clear. So we went to Viola. Before that, it was Andrew's trailer. And before that, it was the farmhouse, farm shed. Which was here. Oh, there's like a thing here. Oh, we can actually just turn the light on in here. I don't think that actually is going to make things any... I don't think it's going to do anything that we weren't able to do before, but... Looks like these might have been jars and jam and pickled vegetables at one point. Now they're just disgusting. Cannot take any of these. Uh, it doesn't give you the opportunity to try to open up the cabinet, but I guess there's nothing useful in there. And I don't think there was anything else that was of use around this farm area. So we only have one key left at this point. It's a generator key. If there was another generator that we needed to turn on, but I don't think there was. I don't think darkness was a problem in any of these buildings now. Unless there was something in one of the buildings that we missed. And this was the first one we went into, of course. We have a flashlight now, but I don't know if that's actually going to be of any advantage. I don't think it's going to allow us to reach anything that we were not able to reach before. Flies buzz around a sink piled with unwashed dishes. It doesn't seem like you can open up the cabinets or anything. And we've already looked at these. There is this room, but we, we already found the secret of this room, and that is that there were keys here, and we got those keys. We could turn music on, but I don't think that really does anything.
the bathroom, of course, with the bathroom rules. Of course, we've already read these. Looking at these again, any information? Well, here's, Jul here's Vi Viola. Right, two children, Lucas and Juliet. This is Chris. A perfect heaven awaits those of faith. Just one more look around. Okay, so the question would be, is there an item or tool that I might have that I may have missed? Well, we could go back to the school. See if there was something else there. There are the jackets. Can't look at these desks or the books. There is the homework on the walls, the note, the tape recorder. Chalkboard. Can't look at this. The first revelation. The day Father James received the truth. Yes, we actually do want to know what that is. The calendar. Um, okay. Okay. Yeah, the Feast of the First Revelation, June 3rd, would... It sounds like it's probably the day that, that Father James was imbued with the truth. June 3rd, no year is given. That's something down there? No, I guess I can't look at that. All right, so we know June 3rd. Does that help us at the moment, though? So at least we, did, we got something from the school. So, rectory is up there, but we have looked, and there's just a padlock on the gate. And I might assume that if we get past that padlock, maybe there is like something that like maybe there would be some way of entering a code. Possibly. Oh, OK. The padlock has a ha, OK. You look directly at the padlock. It's a, it's a combination padlock. You understand. So it was, uh, let's see, we want, no, we want, uh, June, right? All right. Didn't think to look directly at the padlock. I thought it would need a key. Like, but like mundane padlocks do. I did not consider the nature of the divine padlock. Anyway. Here is the father's house. And yes, he looks like he's living fairly well. You take a book off the shelf. We know... Okay, no, we already read that one. Uh, you flip through a pamphlet on the shelf. There is an ancient law... No, we read that one. Okay. Yeah, we, already, we have already seen these. Use lamp. There we go. Lamp is being used. Read Meditation on Suffering. Oh, tell me about it. Transcribed by a sermon given by Father James. What do each of us have in common? A soul? The stain of sin? 
love of our Lord, yes, these things, but also we have all endured great suffering, and that, friends, is why we are here. As Christ suffered, so we have and will continue to suffer. Our suffering paved the path for each of us to join the flock. Suffering, as we know, is the divine currency, but like any currency, we can exchange one form of legal tender for another, and so we pay our debt in physical pain. Why? I know some of you fear the cleansing room. I understand. I really do. But bodily pain is but temporary. It can be overcome. Spiritual pain is eternal. It will follow us long past the days of reckoning. This is your choice. Bleed now from temporary wounds of transient flesh or suffer eternally. When you put it that way, it's not such a difficult decision, is it? Father. I mean, if you put it that way, I know I didn't think about it like that before, Father. You make it make you make it all make sense. Uh, a note, a note, a note on the Messiah. I would like to clarify a few points of confusion that I have noticed among the flock. It is imperative that this is understood deeply and truly. I am not the Christ. Only Christ is the Christ. I am a prophet of Christ, his messenger of flesh, a vehicle of the word. I have been blessed with abilities beyond the normal man and a great responsibility by our Lord, but I am still only a man. My teachings are directly transmitted from our Heavenly Father. Amen. I'm glad that that was cleared up. It's got a little kitchen here. Cannot interact with the kitchen, however. Oh, we have a... That's an odd place for a camera. Let's look at this painting. Well, we've seen that painting before. A camcorder aimed at the bed. You hit the eject button, find a VHS tape inside. Read from the Book of Sariel. The world is a wicked place, and redemption can only be found through Christ. This is the truth, and though it was known to the Lord's flock, they did not heed the word. The Lord Christ descended in final judgment some 1,000 years ago, as foretold in Scripture. Among men he found not one true believer. The angels wept, but the covenant was kept as it must be. None were given eternal life at the feet of the Father, and men were left to fester in their own sin. For two hundred generations man has desecrated the earth given unto them. They have murdered each other, known sinful women, and lusted after false gods. They do not deserve to be saved. The Book of Sariel is very judgy. Let's see, trailer master key. All right, I guess we can open every trailer then if we have that. That made the music go. Let's read the note to Viola. My sweet, sweet V, I have a very important task for you. There is a deceiver among us, a lying snake who intends to bring ruin upon the flock. This is a test. We must prove our faith by removing this cancer. The deceiver will never reveal himself to me, but he might to you. I would ask that you use your feminine charms to get close to the men in the flock. Specifically, I am worried about Andrew, Leonard, and Peyton. Get them to open up to you. If they have nothing to hide, they will be forgiven before Christ. Find the deceiver so that we may strike him from this world and prove our dedication to our Lord. Do this for me, for the flock, and for Christ, Father. I don't know, James. I I think your your flock is a bit too small to start eliminating people just yet. I I don't know. Examine the bed. A bed covered in red satin sheets, pillows askew. Oh, there's something here. Let's see the scripture. 
As we all know, sin is our debt and pain our currency. It is by paying with pain that we cleanse ourselves and become ready for the days of reckoning. However, new teachings have been bestowed on me by the angel Sariel in a vision. The doctrine of alternative cleansing has been revealed. As we know, sin is the intersection of unclean vectors. But if one is fully cleansed, how can sin come from that act? In fact, the opposite is true. The act becomes a godly one. To know deeply a truly cleansed body is to be cleansed oneself. That is, to lie with one who is fully cleansed is to bypass the need for blood cleansing. Now this applies to all cleansed bodies, but, and I do not say this to boast, as of now only I am fully cleansed, Father. And that's very, that's, and this is a great deal. Look, I was worried I would have to burn off my sins in purgatory. According to the Father, I just need to roll around with him on this bed, and it'll, you know, I'll be cleansed. I never thought about that. If you are completely pure, then the act that would normally be sins would be acts of of grace. I kind of like what the Father has to say. Let's listen to the tape deck. We have all been given our purposes by the Lord. And if we listen close enough to our hearts, if we pray hard enough, we can feel that purpose coursing through us. To excel in our God-given purpose is its own form of cleansing. Some of us are called to labor in the fields to feed the flock. Some are called to train and to defend us. Others to teach our children the true way of things. The Lord calls upon many women to provide succor and relief. Now those of you with husbands may be rightly confused. Is this not a sin? I ask you, do you not love the Lord more than your husband? Would you deny the Lord himself your love? I am his flag bearer. Look, I'm just saying that if you truly love the Lord, you you would let the Lord put it anywhere. I'm, I'm, am I wrong about that? Am I wrong about that? Look, it's a hard truth, but you have to hear it. Let's examine this typewriter. Oh, he has many boxes of grape nuts. Dusty old typewriter with a yellowing sheet of paper in the carriage. Oh, can we... I guess we can't look at the paper. Oh, a diary. It's Anne's diary. Another night sleeping downstairs. I don't mean to complain. I can hear James and the others from in here so happy, so fulfilled. It warms my heart. So I don't mean to complain, but it is cold in here, and something in the room is driving my allergies crazy. It's hard to sleep, but I suppose it's all worth it. It's probably these grape nuts. I might, must be allergic to them. Anyway, I can hear James, and they're doing the... uh they're doing the horse role play again. I never really liked that one. Like, he gets out the stirrups and the spurs, and... Well, I mean, it's all in the name of God, obviously. You look tired. Alright, let's head upstairs. Oh, let's look at this. Oh, we already saw that one. I guess this is a picture of Dave. James. Why did I say Dave? James. No, read the notice. Beyond these doors is a sacred place. Only fully cleansed believers who have been given express permission by Father James may enter. The Lord protects this room. Trespassers will suffer mightily. Can you just do that? Can you put like a notice on a door and say, God's going to strike you down if you open this. You better not. I didn't know you could just do that. Oh, it's locked. Let's see. We have Trailer Master, but that's not going to work. We have Camp Regenerator, but I mean, that's not going to work. Um, we do have the VHS tape. 
I wonder if there's a TV with a VCR somewhere that we can use this with. All right, so we have to find the key to the second floor. Did we see a TV in this house? I don't think we did. Like, I mean, we saw the camera. But, I mean, it's not... I don't think there's, like, a TV in here. Hmm. I wonder where a TV would be around here. Like, I mean, in this... In this complex. Well... Maybe it's maybe there is one in here once I get the key. Cuz you'd think that if there is a VCR and a TV in this complex it would be, you know, in in James's house. Cuz where else would it be? All right. Well, we have this key that opens up all the trailers. So let's start opening them up. Let's see what we can find. Is it getting darker? I believe it is. Sun's going down. Maybe we should have come earlier in the day. I don't know. Gonna be hopefully the batteries don't run out, or we're just gonna be stumbling and mumbling around in the dark. Alright, let's start from one side. And you know, just see uh if we can do this. Doesn't work on this door. Strange. I mean it's not really a master key then, is it? No, you're, we were already in violas. That one's rusted. I feel like it would be easy to, like, miss one of these trailers. Trying to make sure I just get them all one one by one. It's like a red dot on this one. What's that about? Here's Andrew. But we were already in Andrew's. This is Leonard's. Yeah, let's get into Leonard's. Leonard was the bad boy who couldn't stop eating cereal. Ooh, thank you, Leonard. Yeah, there's that cereal down there. All right, read the note from Henry. Leo, it's got to be him, I'm certain. He hasn't talked yet, but I have no doubt. Scrounge around his trailer and see if you find any leverage. We busted the lock grabbing him last night, so you have to use your boat cutters to get in. Henry. Hmm. Scrounge around his trailer and use the bolt cutters. All right. Leonard's note. Thou shalt not kill. But it's not that simple, is it? We are God's army. We must protect our flock. This is a war with souls on the line. We must be resolute, unwavering. So why won't my hands stop shaking? Why do I keep seeing his face when I close my eyes? Somehow I didn't think fighting for the Lord would mean being a, beating an unarmed man to death with a shovel. Lord, why won't my hands stop shaking? I could really go for some cereal right now. Where'd you put that uh that shovel, Leonard? The deceiver changed Father James, though only a few of us seemed to notice. He had new revelations almost daily. Doctrines changed. Actions that would have been terrible sins previously were suddenly permissible, while seemingly innocent behaviors became mortal sins. The others seemed to have no problem going along with it. I wondered if something was wrong with me. Father grew visibly agitated, and as adamant as he was about the sanctity of his new revelations, Something was different. He was scared, and that scared me. Mm, the deceiver had compromised Father James. We 
you see him that that's why they had to kill the deceiver it's completely justified well we do have this now the bolt cutters so let's look around and see if we can find anything that needs to be cut open this one's Alejandro. Well, we can't get into Alejandro's. I haven't. don't think that name has come up anyway, so... Oh, here we go. Whose is this? Brother Peyton. I knew it was Peyton all along. I didn't, but... I mean, we saw his name once on the in the um, cafeteria, I think. You clip the chain, which falls simply, limply to the side. The door hangs slightly ajar. Here we go. Ooh, here's the shovel. Give me that. A shovel caked in blood. Read print out. Transmit code XV768. Encryption code 30686. Compromised. Need. Do not wreck frontal raid. Armed mill grade HW plus training. Most are 100% brought in. We'll use violence. All right. Peyton was uh, maybe an FBI agent. Investigating this cult. I changed my lock like you suggested. I left a copy of the new key under the tree near the fire pit. All right, so Lillian, the master key did not work with Lillian's trailer. So I guess we can dig up her key. Was she in on it with Peyton? Father James Israel, born Donald McKittrick. Born Idaho, early 50s, unclear. Vietnam vet, honorably discharged, 1970 due to shrapnel injury. Born again in late 70s. Criminal record includes larceny, drug possession, vagrancy. Married to Anne McKittrick, signs of amphetamine addiction. Receives visions from an angel named Sariel starting in 1986. Left former church and founded Perfect Heaven with wife. Purchased Black Sage Ranch, 1991. And McKittrick Israel, born Oregon, not much known. Worked as secretary for a heating and cooling company for years. Met Donald slash James through church. Married 1981. Complete loyalty to husband. Primary recruiter for group. Andrew Custer, born, huh? Recruited in Houston. Owned small farm. Runs the farm for group. Frequently writes to his brother in El Paso. Viola, Viola DeWitt, mid-30s from Albuquerque. Two children, Juliet, 11, and Lucas, 9. Recently divorced from her husband. Claims frequent abuse. Frequent consort of Father James. Leonard Vanderhoff, late 20s. Former police officer, National Guard, military training. Discharged due to drug addiction. James promised to help him get clean. Seems to have worked for a little while. Access to weapons, trains group members in arms and tactics. Often has alcohol in his breath. Relapse? Dangerous. Okay. Leonard, uh, Leonard can handle himself, it seems. Lillian Carter, early 20s, born San Diego, 1972. Recent college graduate, some useless degree. It's communications. Depressed, trouble finding job. Often goes directory for alternative cleansing with other women. Seems to have more doubts than some others. Reach out to her. Useless degree. Um, I think that's everything in here. All right, so let's go to the fire pit. Wait, okay, there's the chapel up there, so fire pit should be in the direction that we're walking right now. Around, I think it's over here. You dig into the mound and sift through the loose dirt, finding a small brass key inside. Okay, so this was the reason that the master key did not work on Lillian's trailer, because she replaced the lock, because Peyton suggested it. I guess Peyton was getting through to Lillian. Well, 
ran into the fence. And we cannot jump the fence, as you know. There is to be no fence jumping. We uh, we apparently have a good deal of stamina. We can just run as as long as we need to without getting tired. But there is no agility. No jumping at all. Okay, the open yeah, opening in a fence is here, and I think Lillian's was by the edge. I think it was the first one we looked at before. This one, yeah, Lillian. All right, what we got inside? Well, we got a note from Viola. Lillian, forgive me if I'm speaking too freely, but I care deeply about you, and I worry that you're having doubts about the Father and his teachings. You're young, Lily. I understand where you're coming from, believe me. But as... Did we read this before? I feel like we did. As someone with a lot more life experience, let me tell you that you have nothing to doubt. Father James is a prophet of the Lord. He speaks the true word. Yeah, the prophecies that have come true. We did read this. Maybe there was another copy of this in the oldest trailer. I think maybe. What about the note from James? Lillian, a member of the flock who will not be named, happened upon one of the books you purchased while on a trip into town. While reading non-church materials is not strictly prohibited, I must caution you against consuming too much, if any, secular material. The godless worldview is powerfully poisonous with its promises of pleasure without consequences and freedom from rules. But here you know true freedom, freedom from sin, freedom from damnation, and the true pleasure of God's love. Consider this a friendly warning. I want the best for you, my sister. If it becomes clear that your reading is compromising your faith, we may have to change the rules in order to protect you as well as the rest of the flock, Father. Mm. Reading those secular readings. I wonder what this is here. Can't have that. It's going to pollute your mind. There's a key. Oh, the cleansing room key. That's the one we want to get into. Lillian's diary. How can the absolute truth change so rapidly? First, the doctrine of cleansing, which was immutable and unavoidable. Pain is currency, etc., etc. Then the doctrine of alternative cleansing, which seems to change the rules against extramarital sex and polygamy, but only in the service of a clean body. Now Father James has received another revelation, which he pronounced privately only to a few of us women. It's not written down. It hasn't been added to the Book of Sariel. And it directly contradicts previous doctrine. Father says that the Lord has brought a deceiver into our midst in order to test the strength of our faith. We must be ready to prove our dedication to the flock, and like Abraham with his son Isaac, we must be ready to sacrifice our notion of what is moral in order to serve the, co the greater cause. Is this God's plan for us to use our bodies as tools? Why doesn't this feel right? You can't have doubts in the Father. Like he, you, It may seem strange, but clearly he knows best, right? Right? I know that you're beginning to doubt, and you are right to do so. Father James is not what he says he is. If you want to talk more, hang around after evening prayer. I'll linger too. I can help. You're not alone. I'm putting my trust in you with this. I guess this was Peyton. And the pamphlet? Are you in a cult? It's a scary question, but an important one. Spiritual fulfillment and community involvement are important aspects of a healthy life, but it's possible for these to take deeply unhealthy and even dangerous forms. If you're reading this, someone who cares about you is concerned about your well-being. The group displays excessively zealous and unquestioning commitment to its leader, and, whether he's alive or dead, regards his belief system, ideology, and practices as the truth, as law. Questioning, doubt, and dissent are discouraged or even punished. Mind-altering practices such as med uh, meditation, chanting, speaking in tongues, enunciation sessions, and debilitating work routines are used in excess and serve to suppress doubts about the group and its leaders. The leadership dictates, sometimes in great detail, as members should think, act, and feel. For example, as members must get permission to date, change jobs, marry, or leaders prescribe what types of clothes to wear, where to live, whether or not to have children, how to discipline children, and so forth. 
The group is elitist, claiming a special exalted status for itself, its leaders, and members. For example, the leader is considered the Messiah, a special being, an avatar, or the group and or the leader is on a special mission to save humanity. The group has polarized us versus them mentality, which may cause conflict with the wider society. The leader is not accountable to any authorities. The group teaches or implies that it is supposedly exalted and that its supposedly exalted ends justify whatever means it deems necessary. This may result in members participating in behaviors or activities that they would have considered reprehensible or unethical before joining the group. For example, lying to family or friends or collecting money for bogus charities. Subservience to the leader or group requires members to cut ties with family and friends and radically alter the personal goals and activities they had before joining the group. The group is preoccupied with bringing in new members. The group is preoccupied with making money. Members are expected to devote an inordinate amount of time to the group and group-related activities. Members are encouraged or required to live and or socialize only with other group members. The most loyal members feel that there can be no life outside the context of the group. They believe that there is no other way to be and often feel reprisals to themselves or others if they leave or even consider leaving the group. If one or more one or more of these are true for your group, it may not be a healthy community, but don't worry, help is available. Well, these are all good points, but what I would say is that this is from Satan, and uh, that's all we need to say about that. Debunked. Let's listen to this tape. He risked his life coming to me. Somehow he could tell that I was wavering. I'm still not sure how. He was from the FBI, he said and he was here to investigate the group as a cult. When he said that word, I told him to go to hell. I almost went right to Father James, but I didn't. He left me a pamphlet that talked about the signs of a dangerous cult. At first, I refused to read it. What was the point? How could that have anything to do with our group? But I did read it, and even though my entire brain was screaming at me, I went back to him. All right, so Peyton was making some headway with Lillian, but as we know, it sounds like things did not go so well for Peyton. And now we have the key to the cleansing room, which uh, I assume is where we are going to find old, old Pate, or whatever is left of him after all these years. All right, here it is. Let's uh, let's go into the the fun time room, as they might call it, alternatively. A black key with an alchemical symbol for blood etched in. That's su sufficiently ominous. All right. Well, it's a bit, it's a bit cleaner than I actually expected to be. There's a ladder, but the music is playing. Box. Can't, guess I can't interact with that box. Let's see. Sin is thy debt. Pain is thy currency. Examine the altar. Old blackened blood has seeped into the cracks of the altar. Pick up the bloody axe. Okay, got the axe. Fire axe covered in old black blood. Well, if pain is the currency, can we like set up? A payment plan? I mean, I, having debt is not necessarily a bad thing. It's if you come up with a reasonable payment structure, I think that we can all that we can all agree on. Guideline for cleansing. Improper thoughts, lust, three cuts with a small blade. Oh man, I am due for so many cuts. Improper thoughts, doubt, five cuts with small blade, stealing, one finger or one hand, depending on the item's value, sloth. Two lashes from the whip. I'm also due many lashes, apparently. Taking the Lord or Father James's name in vain. Five cuts. Large blade. Murder, rape, idolatry. The violating part. Hand, genitals, eyes. You know, as is expected. 
Yeah. I'm going to have to go to Father James and mention um, that I will need many small blade cuts and a sufficient number of lashes. Uh, pull the chain. There we go. Well, I can see what's behind that. There's some tools. But I don't think I can actually get in there. There we go. Let's head up. Anything around in here? Don't see anything. Okay. Key to the mines. All right, we got that. And what's here? Well, first, there's ooh, the Book of Sariel. And yet the Lord in his infinite love and compassion has not forsaken those who have forsaken him. No man is without the cloud of sin, but the light of the Lord shines brightly. To make themselves ready for the Lord's embrace, cleanse thyself of sin by way of self-sacrifice. Give up thy blood, thy flesh, for it is soiled and pathetic unworthy of the Lord's gaze. For each sin committed by the hand, whip the arm once. For each sin committed by the feet, whip the leg once. For each sin committed by the eyes or mouth, cut the face once. Play, pray thou over thy spilled blood, and in cleansing it thou cleanseth thyself. Sin is thy debt, earthly pain thy currency. For those who are thoroughly purged of sin in this manner, and who, who have followed the commandments of the Lord, and who truly believe in their heart and body, the days of taking will bring them to the feet of the Lord, free of earthly, earthly flesh, awash in divine light for eternity. Have faith, be cleansed, and this will be your reward. Amen. All right, we have... I guess I can't interact with this right here, this record player. But we have a tape deck. He called it the cleansing room, where we would exchange pain in this realm for forgiveness in the next. We'd all gather in front of the altar, and one by one we would declare our sins to the flock, each of us given penance to perform in front of the others. Bloodletting, self-flagellation... I saw men break their own bones, and women cut off a finger that had caused them to sin. It was true devotion, and it was terrifying and wonderful to see. Man, I don't see there being too many opportunities to sin around here, honestly. Like, I don't know where, I don't know how they're getting up to all this sinning in this place. Now, I would say that if, if, they're, if they are, really that's a failure of Father James. Like, if he controls what happens in this place, I don't see how there is so many, so much sin happening here. This is just what, just what I'm going to say. Just a failure of leadership. Anyway, we got the thing to the key to the mines, which is over here. We haven't, no one's talked about the mines, I think. Like, that hasn't come up at all. So let's open up the mines. A small key with a laminated tag that reads... Mines. Nothing on the shelf. Out of service. Examine these boards. Something here has been covered by hastily nailed wooden boards. Fortunately, we have an axe. You hack away with the axe until the boards fall away, revealing an open space behind. Alright, we got an elevator. Let's head on down into the mines? What were they mining here? Sin, maybe. Got a good vein of sin down here. Alright, two ways to go. Here's a generator. Turn this on. With our generator key. No? That's the generator key. But I guess we cannot use that. Maybe we need to find some gas or something to turn that one on. Hmm. 
Ooh, here, yeah, there we go. Now we're getting to the good stuff. Military-grade rifles and ammunition are piled among the straw-lined interior of the crate. All right, looks like uh, Father James was preparing for maybe uh, maybe some kind of assault. Contingency protecting the flock. Our secular enemies see our imminent salvation and find themselves filled with jealousy and rage. They want to keep the world immersed in sin, and they will stop at no lengths to, prepare, to prevent us from fulfilling the Lord's plan. We must be prepared to protect the flock. Henry was able to use his contacts in the Southwest Patriot Corps to get us arms and armor for protection. He will be leading training drills starting Thursday, mandatory for all in the flock, children included. We will rise up and fight in Christ's name if necessary. All right, now we're talking. Probably the same thing here. Yeah. Why do you need so many pamphlets, James? There's not many people here. Anything else in here? Weapons. 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 And some oil. Oil can. There we go. Rusty oil can with a long spout. Your dad had one of these in the garage. I'm sure... Uh... The defense of the of the camp went well. These things never go wrong. Some target practice. Make sure everyone is prepared for when those those seculars storm the camp. Preventing us from achieving our our salvation, which they know we're so close to, and they can't stand it. Move the minecart. Do I can I use an oil can to like lube it up? There we go. Examine these boards. Let's chop the boards. There we go. Oh, here there is a body. Who is it? A decomposing body curled in the fetal position. Well. Oh, it's not, but you reach out to touch it and a note falls from the corpse's pocket. You wish you could give the body a proper burial, but it would probably fall apart if you touched it. L, I got your delivery. I made a copy of the key to James's room last night, but I think Andrew noticed. He was acting suspicious. I'm going to hide the copy somewhere. We both have access to it in case something happens. Look in the southwest corner of the cornfield. You'll find it. All right. So the key to James's room is going to be in the southwest corner of the cornfields. Let's just remember that. And this apparently is Peyton. I think it might have been my fault they found Peyton. We were seen together too often, maybe. But how would they know? Maybe they saw the pamphlet? I don't know. I don't know, but I can't shake the feeling that it's my fault. It doesn't matter. They found him. They told us he had decided to leave the flock. I didn't believe them, but I didn't ask any questions. After that, we moved on. It was like he had never been there at all. It scared me, but instead of trying to get away, I just let myself fall deeper in. I did my best to shut out any doubts. It was easier that way. Well, I mean, that's just not not a believable cover story. Why would anyone want to leave this flock? Like the story just falls apart. There's little gas sloshing around. Hmm. Someone would want to actually leave this fabulous place full of salvation? I, I'm not buying it. I'm just not buying it. Uh, let's see. Got to get back to that generator. Wherever that generator was. I think it was this way. Yeah, down here. Okay. There we go. Okay. Okay, lights are flashing. I don't really know how that necessarily helps us. 
What was down here, by the way? Is this where the weapons were? Uh, blocked by rocks. And that's blocked by rocks, and that's where we came from. Let's see. Was there anything that we missed because the lights weren't on? We have this flashlight, so I don't really think we would have missed anything. Unless maybe there's some other device that needs the power to be on. But then again, since we know where the key is, it's in the cornfield, maybe we can just leave. Like Maybe there's nothing else to do down here. That could be. Well, let me just check. And this is back where we found him and the gas. So I think that's everything. Let's head back to the elevator. All right. Let's head to that cornfield. Southwest, they said? I think they said. And now it's even darker. All right, so let's see. We're going south, so we're going to be hitting the, car the cornfield directly. So southwest corner of the field is next to the community hall. So I guess that's a landmark we can use. It's a beautiful night out tonight. Oh, north is to the left, isn't it? So that would mean... I mean, it's if it's if it's southwest, it would still be like below the the um uh, the farm shed. So let's find that shed. That's the cleansing room over there, I think. Yeah, that's cleansing room. Which means shed should be along this side. There is shed. All right, so... Oh, I see some dirt. There's some dirt. Examine that patch of dirt. Find a small brass key. And... It's unlabeled. But we know where this goes. Let us head back to the rectory. Actually, I just realized we've never actually been in the church. Maybe that's where the bodies are. But being able to go into Father James's forbidden room is just about as good. use his forbidden key to open his forbidden door and inside some, got some curtains oh TV and VCR here we go let's have a look around shoe box a shoe stuff stuffed with baggies of white powder and a glass pipe blackened at the end oh it's Jesus powder 
It helps them become, you know, closer to God. Finally slept last night. Spoke with the devil. He came to the foot of my bed to bargain for the safety of the flock. But lo, I outsmarted him. Begged me to stop my crusade, and I spat in his face. Spat in the devil's face, and he shriveled away. Sin has physical mass. I have measured it in experiments, and I have determined the mathematical formula for determining a person's sin. Weight not visible to naked eye. Requires a special weighing device attuned to divine wavelengths. We'll build and test all flock to ensure cleanliness, especially Lillian, Julian, Juliet, Leonard. Intended to wait for Juliet to come of age for alternative cleansing, but came across rabbinic texts citing consummation of marriage as young as three years and one day. We'll pray and wait for an answer. I mean, if God says, if God says, then God says, you can't argue with it. Dream Notes. A great winged leviathan emerges from the clouds, speaking in radio waves, surrounded by angels. Leviathan spoke of the deceiver closing in, bringing unclean evil to the flock, infecting them with doubt and opening our gates to the outside world. Angels flew into the Leviathan's mouth and lit his tongue on fire. Breath of flame exploded outward and engulfed the world in my dream. I understand, Lord. All right. We have the bed. Father James's bed, messy, covered in thick woolen sheets that have held in years of must. Oh, that is so much must. And this combination lock, huh? Well, I don't. I doubt anything that we have here will open that up. Examine the box. A stack of old nudie mags, ranging from pretty tame to seriously perverted, tucked away under the bed as if it's a twelve-year-old's bedroom. Look. The father sometimes needs his material to be able to perform the alternative cleansing. You understand. It's all in the service of God. All in the service. He found an ancient rabbinic text that says that the porno mags are actually holy if you yourself are holy. It's true. Ancient rabbinic texts. You can't argue with that. Examine the altar. Another altar, also also bathed in, in red light, sitting under a wall of religious imagery. Christ's dead body being removed from the cross of Golgotha. We've seen many pictures of him. A reprint of an etching of the four horsemen of the apocalypse. All right, well, this is uh, what we've been waiting for, I guess. We found the TV and the VCR. Turn it on. So VCR, let's put in the tape. My flock, I have wonderful news. No. No. <clears throat> My flock, I have wondrous news. The days of reckoning are upon us. Some of you may be afraid. Damn it, no. My flock, I have wondrous news. The days of reckoning are upon us. Be not afraid. This is the day we have been working towards all this time. The focal point of all history. The end point of all creation. I have seen the signs. I have heard the word of the Lord. I speak the word of the Lord. I am the word of the Lord, yes, that's good there. Three, five, six, nine, damn it. Three, five, six, eight, shit. And and what's the code for the damn safe? Four. Four. 
I don't, I don't know. I'm not really buying him as this really inspirational leader type. Whenever we hear him, it just he just sounds a little, little you know, mousy, a little wishy washy. I don't know. But uh, what was that? Three five six four. Let's see. What, what we got? Read these notes. Praise be to the Lord. Our temple has been revealed. Angels of the Lord have revealed specifications for our temple. The temple of the prophet shall be a sacred space reserved only for Father James and his chosen to pursue further revelation and closeness to the Lord. The temple will contain a single king-size bed, food enough for two people for 200 days, full copies of my scripture, weapons, and ammunition. That's all you need, really. The measurements which must be followed exactly are as follows. Well, I guess we don't find out what the measurements are. Hmm. Oh, kind of stuttered there for a bit. Uh, let's see. Okay, there's something. Oh, the seal. There we go. No more excuses. It's time to head to the chapel and face the past. All right, so large golden medallion. Now that you look closely, it's gold. Paint on plaster. Hmm. A golden facade covering the cheap material. Not sure what this is supposed to be, honestly. Yeah, I'm not really sure either. Well, all right. There's only one building we have not been in, and that is the actual church. But now we have the medallion to put into the door. go. Place the seal on the door and hear a click somewhere inside the mechanism. Hello? Well, there I don't see any bodies in here. Can't examine the organ. thought there was something in the corner, but it's just a plant clipping through the wall, I guess. All right, I guess the only thing to look at here is this tape recorder, but let me check the pews, just in case. Do a little pew checking. Can I look at this cross? I don't think so. All right, what does the tape recorder have to say? Don't be afraid. There's no need to be afraid. We must go through the flames, but the flames will not hurt us. Not our true selves, our spiritual selves. I know his will, and it's time. This world is molded in filth. It's too far gone. They sent demons to test our resolve. They expected us to give up the fight, but here, today, we prove to all of them that we never gave up. Our faith never wavered. Today, we take our place at the foot of the throne of the Lord. Here now, we'll dull the bodies a little. There's no need for it to hurt. Here, drink this. Drink this. Pass these around. Things will go a little fuzzy, but then the flames will take us and we will join our Lord in his heaven. We will be by his side forever, where we belong. Amen! Amen. Boy, I love each and every one of you so much. God bless. 
that's when they locked the doors. And then Andrew and Leonard started soaking rags and lighter fluid while I, I started handing out the cups. Little paper cups full of crushed up quaaludes mixed with lemonade. Father kept preaching as we drank. They lit the rags and put them around the outer walls. Everything caught so quickly, as soon as everything was on fire and, and people just sat, sat down in it, let it take them. Something clicked, I, I don't know what. I needed to get out, I didn't want to die. I remembered Father's temple and I ran. I guess the feds were closing in. Time to go. Also, Molded and Filth is my new uh, my new metal band. Hoping to book some gigs. Read journal. Don't you remember? Don't you remember how you survived? Why don't you want to remember? You know why. When the time came, you couldn't face the Lord. Your doubt had eaten away at you. You didn't join them in their glorious death, but in your doubt, neither did you save them. You are a coward. secret basement. Covers are still rustled from the few nights you spent here. The door shut behind me and everything was dark and completely silent. As if the burning chapel and all the people dying behind me didn't exist. The drugs took over then. It was all I could do to crawl into bed before I passed out. The bookshelf is full of fringe religious texts and several copies of Father James's work. In one lower corner tucked away, there's a stack of comic books. I mean, you really you, you need to have the true holy texts with you when you're squirreled away down here. And of course, we got our Wheaties and our Grape Nuts and our giant can full of pork and beans, I think it was. The refrigerator's full of spoiled food. The smell fills the room as soon as you open the door. And of course, we got to get our guns. How are you supposed to hold yourself up in a bunker if you don't have guns? Oh, but the bunker goes down even deeper. How far down does it go? How far down do you need your bunker to go? Man, who started the fire? Ma'am, I know you've been through a lot, but we need your cooperation to piece all of this together. Who started the fire? Um, pr pretty much everyone. Father James with the first flame, but the others helped it spread. So they weren't coerced? No. They were weeping with joy. People were singing. 
And you? What did you do? Ma'am? And deeper and deeper we go. Our flashlight isn't working anymore. Honey, you're being quiet. I don't know what to say. It's just... Lillian, was it something we did? Dad! I just don't understand how you could run off and join some insane cult. I don't know, Dad. I don't know. You're a smart girl. What were you thinking? Lillian, the things I've heard on the news... Where are you going? So, Lillian, have you been having any more thoughts since your last attempt? All the time. It seems as if you almost regret surviving the fire. I don't know. I, I don't. It's so confusing. I didn't want to die, but I feel like I let them all down. Let them down because you didn't save them, or because you didn't die with them? I don't know anymore. Well, listen to me. No matter what, you deserve to live. I promise you. Lillian, you deserve to live. I... I need to go. I, I can't do this right now. I, I can't. you don't want to hear me ramble about mechanical engineering for another 20 minutes. Tell me more about you. You study communications, right? What bad job does that get you? <laughs> well, right off the bat, not much. I, I couldn't find work, so I uh, ended up backpacking through Europe for a year after college. Oh, cool. I've always wanted to do something like that. I bet it was amazing. Yeah, it was super fulfilling to see all those different ways of life. Really eye-opening. God, that was a long time ago. Man, I'm jealous. I jumped right into work after school. Working 70, what, 80 hours? You know how it is. Just expect to devote everything to it. Like a, like a religion. It took me a while to see how messed up it was. Yeah, I can imagine. You have one unheard message. First unheard message sent yesterday at 7.15 p.m. Lil, is, is everything all right? I've been trying to get a hold of you all day. Pl please pick up. I'm worried about you. Okay, just, just call me back. Love you. End of message. To delete this message, press 7. Message deleted. Well, it seems like we've reached a dead end.
remember now. I tried not to. I thought I could move on. Pretend it hadn't happened. But here it is. I'm looking at it. I was here. We were all here. And now it's just me. There you are. I've been trying to get a hold of you for hours. Where are you? I, I had to take care of something. Look, just... Are you okay? I was getting worried. Yeah, yeah, yes. I'm, I'm fine. I'm heading home now. Tim? There are some things I need to tell you. I met Anne first, waiting for the bus. Normally, I avoid talking to just about anybody, but she struck up the conversation. She was so pleasant, so confident. She smiled at me as if she had known me as a kid, and we were just catching up after all these years. She told me she could tell I had a hole in my life. She knew what that was like, she said. She had also had a hole, but it was gone now. I asked her what she was selling, and she laughed and said nothing, nothing at all, that what she had to offer was free for anyone who wanted it bad enough. I asked her what had helped her. She just said, James. Oh, that, was, that was pretty good. Right, so this has been uh, Sagebrush. As I said at the beginning, it was uh, one of the 1600 games that's part of Hitchio's uh, bundle that they've been selling recently. Um, and I hadn't heard of the developer of this, which, you know, that's not uncommon when it comes to Ichio indie games. Uh, but this was made by Redact Games. So it'll, oh, tapes found 15 out of 12. We did, we got over 100% tapes. Like, usually I go for 100% completion. We got over 100% completion this time. <laughs> Two hours, six minutes. And that was with me speaking all the, all the files out loud. So probably longer than it would usually take for someone to complete this. Uh, so, yeah, this was, uh, this was all right. I, I like the look of it. I like the sound of it. Um, of course, we've seen these kinds of games before where you walk around an environment and you learn about things that were happening in that place through audio logs and text logs. So it's something we've seen before, but I think that this was done pretty well. Um, and the ending did a little bit of, a little bit of horror at the ending, a little bit of reality warping as we were seeing what was happening and learning the truth about who our character was and what she was going through after the whole business with the cult. And then, you know, Things seemed like they turned out okay. As okay as things could have gone. In the end. For her, anyway. It says to press any button to continue. I'm attempting to press any button. Uh, but it does not seem like any button is doing anything. But that's, that's, that's okay. That's fine. Okay, I pressed escape. And I guess that was any, any button. Because it uh, closed the game. Well, that has been Sagebrush. Just a little, you know, little self-contained story about a small little cult being run by a cult leader who, uh, well, did what cult leaders will do. A um, little bit of mystery as we, were, as we were walking through it as to who our character was and why we were here and trying to figure out what happened and why everyone killed themselves. But, uh... Then things wrapped up in the end as we discovered all of those facts. And uh, like I said, I think that that wrapped up pretty well. That's been Sagebrush. And if uh, Redact Games makes another you know, narrative-based game like this, I certainly would be interested in checking it out, seeing what they come up with, because I did like playing this. I liked walking through it and reading the story and all that. But um, 
as far as the bundle that I mentioned, many, many, many games in this bundle. I checked this one out because I did see a few people saying that uh, this one was worth taking a look at, and it seemed interesting to me because, you know, I do like story-based games. I do like horror games. This wasn't exactly a horror game, but it did start to add an element of that near the end. Um, and I enjoyed uh, I enjoyed our time with it. I hope you enjoyed your time with it as well. So that has been our little walkthrough, little play of Sagebrush. <laughs>